identity family will back again on the african identity platform my name is king idris and i'm here again to give you guys the new insight about what is going on on the home ground in africa and international community my people i have my brother mr steven a day in the building today we'll be talking about enormous topic on the platform today so many things happen throughout this week and a lot of stuff happened around the world too we'll be talking about the passing away of david songs and uh, son and we'll be talking about the passing away of the american rapper um takeoff that was being shot and killed in houston texas so my people you know is very sad i'll be talking about the black on black crime and also on the african home ground we'll be talking about the enormous hike in food price and we'll be talking about who will be the next president of nigeria between the obedient frontier or tinubu the former governor of lagos state or the former vice president of nigeria atiku abubaka and other 18 candidates too that are involved in this presidential race in nigeria so my people is a beautiful day on the african unity platform so my brother mr steven what do you think about what we'll be doing today uh, you know things have been happening in the past few weeks around the world you just mentioned the passing of uh davido's son yeah it's very uh, painful it's very painful it's very first, sad first my condolences to the family of uh davido and chioma mm. it's, 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 it's terrible it's terrible uh, you know davido is a it's a public figure around the world, not only in Nigeria. So people have been sending their condolences and we are sending us too from this platform. Yeah, it's a, it's a sad situation. We're sending our condolences out to Davido and to Shioma. You know, it's a very sad situation. And we know, um, like last two years ago, a prominent Nigerian musician to call um, the bunch, his son too passed away through the same um same way. same way you know it's very sad i don't know why uh children are you know going into the swimming pool and there's nobody you know to look after them you know i don't even want to talk about that because it's too it's too sad because david is one of the prominent artists in nigeria that have enormous enormous heavy duty on his shoulder towards the africa communities and the people in the african communities the video helped a lot of nigerian graduates i have a lot of people i can make a sample of like some people that i went to school with in nigeria myself that they're my own friends the video really helped a lot of people from this platform we saying our condolences to shioma and the video on the passing away of their son if I so my people will be going on to the next topic we'll be talking about the passing away of the american rapper take off from the migos from the migos group that come out of atlanta so my brother what do you think about the situation you see uh still talking about the video although it's a it's a sun event you know the video is one of the biggest musical export from Nigeria no and, even in Africa yes in Africa even in the world hmm. is a brand of himself you know I remember the last time he was in London at O2 Arena hmm. he sold out yes yeah, that, that, that wasn't the first time he always sold out yeah and you still mention about his uh, uh, his large art how he helped people a lot uh, yeah he, he was uh, on the news again, not quite long when he helped people with over 250 million naira. He donated that amount to charity. Yes, that was about 500,000 US dollars. Hmm. Despite that, he is still a very humble man. He's very, 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 very humble. Always welcome people, and uh, I've seen how people he helped uh, still went back to do one or two bad things against, against him, him and yeah. he still welcome them still back still welcome them back he still yeah. welcome them back you remember the case of uh uh 
uh, his road manager. Uh, no, no, the, even this uh, guy, this Sasu Kruna, portable. Oh, how he helped portable Sasu <laughs> went again to campaign for the opposition party, party you know, in Oshun State. Yeah, David's uncle. He's yeah. in PDP. In mm -hmm. fact, he's the governor elect of a state in Nigeria. Yes. So, and when Potebu apologized, he's still welcoming back to the fold. So, that is the kind of person Davido is. It is terrible this thing happened to him. Right? You can't question God, but my advice is uh, whenever we are making such a uh, decision to make uh, our life comfortable by making pools around our house, or anything of such, you should make them child-proof. You should make them child-proof so that you prevent such occurrence. From children from going yeah, from to the yeah, uh, yeah. swimming pool, As like protecting to, the to, child to, around to from the from swimming pool. Dangers. For them such for, for like uh, child safety yeah, around that, the swimming that, pool. That child-proof, yes. Hmm. So that you cannot, uh, you cannot continue to lament every time when we are losing our kids in such a so manner, sad a manner. Sad. So, um, what do you think? Um, because a lot of Nigeria have been talking about the video too about this issue. What do you think? Because I don't even know what they're gonna tell him. Like, I don't even know what I we even talked about him. Like, I don't even want to talk about this issue. It's because it's been it's gone viral, mm -hmm. and everything we talk about on this plat platform, like when I have interview with you, is viral. You know. No, no, as, as, the as, a, as a family man, as a father, I understand it's done and it should be done. You know, I think a few days ago we, we saw the picture, the video of the boy in question celebrating his birthday. His birthday, a few, yeah, yes. a few days ago. And we have ago, seen yeah. a lot of videos, a lot of pictures of how the video himself uh, manifest love to this uh, son, to this boy. And now he's, he's gone. So of course, the video and his family are done. They are in terrible situation. I don't even know what they will be saying to Shioma now. It's a very mm -hmm. sad issue. This is very, very so, sad. My brother, so we'll be stepping on to the next topic. So we'll be talking about the black-on-black -black crime in the United States of America. And uh, Migos, there's an artist out of the Migos. The Migos, they are like a rap group out of Atlanta. And this guy, his name is Takeoff. The group has split off their three in number, Takeoff, Offset, and um, Quavo. But Offset left the group, whereby Quavo and take and Takeoff was the one with the new Migos. But he passed away sadly after a dice game and a heated confrontation between the Migos group and some unknown uh, people at this time, the police have not come out with no, they have not said nothing about it. But you know, they shot this guy twice, they shot him once in the head and they shot him once in the torso. Mm -hmm. So, this black on black crime in the United States of America, what do you think about it? No, it's, 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 this is not the first time, it's mm. been there for a long time. We remember Notorious BIG, yeah, we remember Tupac Shako, yeah. So, this is not the first time, and this, no. This musical gangsters, uh, we only pray that things like this we they just die down gradually because uh, you know we know the the kind of lifestyle these musical stars live, especially the black ones. It's always been the black people against black people. Hmm. So black on black crime. Yes. Black so on black so crime so is. why why do you why do you call them gangster? Why do you say the why do you call them gangster? No, see if somebody has the the the, the mind. No, before you kill another, before you pull out your gun at another person, you must have planned it. And this is a group; it's not an individual thing. Every musical star has their his own body of people around him. That is a gang on its own. So it's one gang against the other. But you know the kind of music like these artists do, they do mostly hip hop music. Mm -hmm. But in America they call it street music. Yes. So if you do street music, you're gonna talk about something that happened in the street. Yes. Like people struggling, people lifestyle, yes. you know, their day to day uh, struggle and activities. You know, it is in the street we have the crimes. It is the street we have uh, marijuana smoking, it is the street we have all 
kinds of terrible things and activities at, yeah terrible activities and you know the the, the, the blacks they populate the streets you, you hardly hear this among the white singers the white musicians are always among the blacks because they own the streets so to say they are always on the streets so that is why it is easy this kind of uh, crime is it's not but, new to them but you know mr steven like the african-american have their own history in america too mm -hmm. they have their own struggle yes. in terms of the um transatlantic slave trade yes. and the struggle of the black people and almost black people don't even have their father in the house you know there's a lot going yeah. and you know when you don't have adequate family to put something together there will be um, the case of manners, case of talks, you know, and a lot of issue will be coming up. So from my own side, what I think about the um, America music hip hop scene is just like they talk about street music and a lot comes with street music. Yeah. But the black on black crime <laughs> should stop. You see, you see, it, you can take the kid of the street, but it is difficult to take the street of the kid. Hmm. If you grow up in the street, the street is in you. Yeah, it's yeah, it for is, life. It, it, see, it is not only in the music industry. Even look at boxers. Some prominent boxers who are black, they grew from the street. And that's the, see the case of Mike, uh, Mike, Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah, he grew from the street. They call him Dirty Ike. He, from he grew up in um in Brooklyn yeah. in in uh, what's it called in the East New York side of Brooklyn, and they call him Dirty Ike when he was growing up. He became a world champion, but the street was still in him. Yeah. So that that is their lifestyle. If you grow up in the street, it is difficult for you to leave the street. Get out of the street. That is the problem. But is the street lifestyle affecting the music lifestyle in the street? What is affecting each other? Is it the street well, lifestyle it, yeah, or it, the? Yes, yeah, it is the street that is affecting their music. It is the street that is affecting their lifestyle. The street lifestyle is yeah. affecting their music it is affecting lifestyle. Their music, yes. In, you see, most of these musicians, you know, is, they use lewd words because that yeah. is what obtains in the street. Yeah. Yeah. So that is how they grow. That is the only lifestyle they know. They know. Whether they have money, they have fame or not, they belong to the street. <laughs> so, the black on black crime in the Knights of America is not a thing. It's not a new thing to you. It's not a new thing. So you talk about it's the passing away of notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shako, and enormous people that have passed away to in the Knights of America mm -hmm. in this struggle of hip hop music. So you know it's a sad situation whereby the black on black crime in the Knights of America is coming up every time and it's getting into something eaten like i don't even understand where to put it so we'll be going through to the next topic so we'll be talking about the food hike in price in nigeria why uh the food hike in prices in the whole of africa is not even only nigeria alone the real question i'll be asking you what do you think cause the the expensive and you know, enormous food price coming out of Africa. What do you think caused this food price to be more expensive in Africa? You know, the other time I was this platform, we talk about the climate change and flood. This is one of the factors for hike in food prices. That is one. Two, you no know, government in Africa uh, selfish. They don't think they, they are not visionary. They don't think about the future. Africa possesses the largest uh, arable lands in the whole world. That is our strength. Africa is densely populated. That is another strength we have. We should be able to maximize these potentials. We have the land. We have the strength. So what stops us from for, for, from producing our food? But it's quite unfortunate. We are not doing that enough. There are no incentives. The environment is not uh, conducive for hmm. us. Nobody is going to the farm again. Of course, when we have shortage of pro production, the, the, the simple laws of uh, demand and supply, we play. Yes. So the, the fools are not there. There are a lot of uh, uh, countries in Africa we have experienced inflation because too much money running around for few products 
And you see, in Nigeria, the federal uh, government, through the central bank, the bank that is regulatory of all financial activities, has come up to mop up excess. The liquidity. Liquidity yeah. in, in, in the economy. Yeah. The, the central bank of Nigeria says 80% of the money in circulation is not through banks. Yeah, so uh, we have too much money. We have too much good. So things must go high. I think they're trying to like, regulate and control the inflation in the economy. Yes, yes. So that is the problem. So, um, what we need, is, we need to produce more, and we need to mop up excess liquidity in circulation. Okay. So, um, what do you think the citizen of Nigeria should do in times of the food? price because it's not even only in nigeria it happens everywhere in africa even in ghana even in rwanda in ethiopia in burundi in botswana everybody is no. complaining of this economy now in africa everybody most, is complaining most if not all african countries are import dependent <laughs> they are import they, dependent. they are import dependent most of their goods and services are imported. So you are saying we are not, we don't depend, we, we don't depend on we, our yes, own goods and produce, services in Africa. Yes, we don't, we don't produce enough. As of the last time I checked, a dollar is about eight hundred naira. That is local currency in Nigeria. This must be expensive. If you don't produce enough, we don't export, we import everything. This must naturally be expensive. There's, there are no two ways. We don't need to be an economist to know that. Everybody should know that. We need to produce more and more and more and export to hand foreign currency, foreign exchange. But why Why is it that all countries in Africa are complaining about their economy at this particular time? Because we, are depe we depend so much on what we import. We don't produce enough. From the Western countries, right? Yes, from the Western countries. We so, need to produce more. We need to export more. Why is so, China not complaining? So are you saying our our youth are lazy, or we as Africans are lazy? Or we, we are not. We are not lazy, but mm -hmm. we need conducive environment to produce. In Nigeria, the the, the power generation in Nigeria is about four thousand megawatts. That is less than what a bureau in New York Manhattan is generating using, and consuming. Just one bureau, yeah. One bureau in New York. Yeah, so New how York, do we yeah. produce? We need power to produce. We need power to be effective. And there is no adequate power supply in Nigeria. In, in, in an economy that is developing like Nigeria, these uh, little, little businesses, they are the ones that run the economy. But what do you think about the government of Nigeria privatizing all Nigerian sectors? I don't think that would be the, the solution. There are many uh, infrastructures that are already dead or decaying in Nigeria. We don't have power. Dead or decay. We don't have power Nigeria. supply. We don't have roads. We don't have good schools. For crying out loud, university lecturers were on strike for about eight months. That's a whole academic year. So how do we produce? How do we move forward? It is not going to be possible. The youth are ready to go to school. The schools were closed. What would they do? You want to travel from... You have your product. You want to sell your product from one place to the other. The roads are not good. What do we do? So now you're trying to say our government, they are like... Um, they are not competent. They are largely responsible. They are largely responsible. Why do you say they are largely responsible? No, no good roads, no power supply, no incentive. So, so it's like they, they have no plans for us. They have no plans for us. They are selfish. They have plans for themselves. Can you imagine how ships we navigate Nigerian territorial waters and and siphon uh, crude oil for years? And nobody knows nothing nobody about, knows about it. it. And nobody say nothing that about is it. Billions of billions of dollars. A, 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 one person we we, we embezzle allegedly though billions of naira. Where do we go from there? And it's not just one person. The other day, the 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 social critic, constitutional lawyer, 
from a father and a son said there is more dollar dollar in, Nigeria, in, Nigeria, in South than, America, Nigeria, than in America. Than America. <laughs> yeah, there, I saw the news. We yeah. have more dollar in more dollars in Nigeria than in even in America. You people can check my videos. So, I have that content in my in my videos. So how? So we are only not uh, dependent on goods and services. We are only even dependent on their currency. Okay, so is it the dependency on Western um, um, government to do something for us or importation or we talking about corruption? Because from my own side, I think corruption is um, a pandemic in this um, issue we're talking about. You see, all of these things play hand in hand. If you have leaders who are not visionary, who are selfish, who are not planning for the people, or things like this must manifest. If one government official, and you have had cases of not one, not two, or not three, of being caught with billions of naira, millions of dollars cash in the apartments. Red and dead. In the apartments. So what do we do? What do you think the the the, the ordinary citizens we do? Their hands are tied. Their hands are tied. If our government in Africa are not serious with us, they are not serious. We can't produce anything. So everything we have, we must import. Even toothpick. Toothpick. We import toothpicks. We import pencils. We import everything. We and we are so dependent on importation that we import used goods. We we import used dresses, used shoes, everything used, and we have a market, one of the largest market in Africa, in Naba called Ariara. Where these guys can produce shoes. They can, I've been produce, there. They can produce anything. I've been, I've been there too. I've been there. I've been there I too. know Ariara inside out. Another, yeah. They produce all sorts of things. Yeah. This is where government should come in and help them. I've been to Onisha. I've seen a lot of things these guys are doing in Onisha. Government can finance these people. This is how to generate foreign exchange. As a, in, in uh in Ariara, I know neighboring countries, at least Cameroon, some places in Cameroon, they travel down to Ariara to buy, yeah, to yeah, buy, to buy things. Yeah, even this from Benin Republic, even from Togo. This is what I have seen. This is what I even know. Even some places in Ghana, they come down to so, Ariara in Aba to buy stuff. Empower these people, establish them, give them the enabling environment, let them establish big time and do this business they know how to do. This is a way of generating foreign exchange. But when we depend on countries for everything, we cannot go forward. Things no. must deteriorate this way. The Nigerian government depends on Western um, countries for a lot of stuff. Even with our crude oil, we have to like take it to them. They have to be the one to redefine, to refine, refine it for us and sell it. And you know, some of this money, we don't even know where they're going to. You know. It's something that's becoming up in Nigeria, and a lot of the citizens in Nigeria really know this. You know, we're just talking about it. Uh, on my platform, it's not to put nobody down. It's all about unity on this platform. We talk about unification. We talk about oneness. We talk about togetherness, you know, for the growth and for the rise of the African children coming out of from the shore of Africa. So, um, my brother will be asking you another question. What, I'm, what do you think about the... Um, next coming um 2023 presidential election in nigeria well the, the same set of people the same results we should not expect anything different so why do you say the same set of people the same result what do you mean by the same result the the, the facts are there apc presidential candidate bola ahmed Tinubu was the governor for eight years mm -hmm. in lagos state in lagos state nigeria the richest state in that country almost in africa Atiku Abubakar was a vice president for eight years under PDP, in vice president country. to former president Olusegun Obasanjo. Obasanjo yeah. Peter Obi uh, was a, a governor of a state, perhaps the most uh, locally industrialized state in Nigeria. In the Anambra eastern side state, of Nigeria, Nambra state. Nambra yeah. state for eight years. Yes. 
I don't think I I, I should praise them enough for so what about for their still worship during those periods of the south. So what about well, other the, candidates? The, the, the under candidates, unfortunately, do not have the power, the financial muscle to contest with these three men. What do you mean I, by financial yeah, muscle? Because yeah. you know, it's politics. I don't think any financial muscle should be needed. I think it should be about the special interest of the people and somebody that is gonna like take the country to the next level yes. in times of economics uh, to put down the corruption level in the country to fight against the inflation issue the hike of food all the issues that we have uh, pertaining to the human race in nigeria is to look for somebody that will put that in order so we're looking for the what people should be looking for and yes. i think most of the nigerians are looking for mm -hmm. is the person that have the interest of the country in is or a heart you know yes. that's the person they should be looking for not somebody that have um money. Um, money capacity or the money muzzle to put into the uh, politics because that's where the corruption comes because i'm not going to spend money and not see no result i'm going to push in everything all the muscle that i have you know to to you know to 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 rig the election to, for my own yeah. benefit yeah. and purposes you know i don't think um the money muscle should be the case what do you think well, well said well said from you well said that is the uh, the standard that's how it should be that's how it should be we should look out for people who have the genuine interest of nigerian people at hand uh but uh, again it's, it's it's almost impossible for people who, who don't have money to, to, to rule the world. <laughs> Good ideas don't win election. Numbers win election. It is the person that has the highest number of votes that is the winner. Now, how do we ensure that the, 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 the best candidate, even if he does not have the money, wins in the election? Every polling booth must have a party agent. We have over 700 local governments. Yes, over 700. Over 700 local governments throughout Nigeria with several thousands of polling booths. Is it possible for a poor man, a poor candidate to put party agents in all those places? No. It it's is not, not possible, possible because it's too it, it, huge. It's too huge. It's still, Financially too because huge. I remember. Because, uh, because I can't see how you put a party agent at the uh, uh, police at the polling station, unit, yeah. at the polling unit, you will not pay him. You, you, you have to pay him, and if you if you pay him, you spend money. So that's why they're using the um, the copper, the NYC. No, those are those are the government, the INEC representatives, officials. Each party, each candidate must produce his own agent. To, oh, to, be, or to be on the ground, yeah, yeah on to, election to day, yeah. The activities on the ground, yeah, to on ensure election that day. everything goes fair yeah, and fair. You're right. So, and you're they right. have to be paid. You have to pay them. That is one, two. The level of poverty in the country is so high that if you give people as little as 2,000, 3,000 naira, they are ready to change their mind. It is those who live for four years, we know whether a government has done well or not. not. I know somebody personally who, who, who lost a child because he was not rich enough to pay the bills, hospital bills. Hmm. So, people are using election period as an opportunity. Yes, I'm tired of old faces. I long for something new. Somebody with more, more strength, physical strength, more new ideas to come to power, but it's like a miracle we're expecting. So you want a young man that is going to make a, a young, new a, narration, a new, a, a new beginning a, in the Nigerian politics. A totally new candidate. Somebody new. Somebody new. So let me ask you, what do you think? What do you think about if I was to ask between Tinubu, Peter Obi, and Atiku, who do you think will become the president out of these three people? And my choice is not among the three of them. My choice is not. I am not particularly interested in any three of them. I'm not. So who do you? Interested. Who are you but, interested in? In all I, the candidates? These are old faces. 
the same the, people. Agbaje, the same Agbaje people. is still in the race. Showere, so, you know, similar people that people know. Yeah, so Ore Magalwans, people like that. I would have loved to have somebody who is completely new to the to, to governance. And young, to, vibrant, young, young you vibrant know, somebody. Not that will bring new ideas, new agenda to the another, system. Not another, as you not another Atiku, another Peter will be. I, I don't no, no, I don't want any of them. My interest is not on any. I want somebody new. Let's try. Let's try another person for at least so, for the first time. So let's see how it works. So what do you think about the Nigerian citizen? What do you think the Nigerian citizen will do with the movement of the new obedience, or the NSAS movement? You know, with the upcoming protesting that is coming everywhere in nigeria everybody is making uh their voice being heard now like a lot of people are speaking out everywhere even in the rural area in the urban area people are really speaking their mind out because the economy in africa is not a joke and is bouncing we out on nigeria because of the enormous population of the country so what do you think the citizens should do as as much as possible, as much as uh, it is going to be conducive for them and safe for them, I think they should go out a mass at the right time, campaign for their candidates, free of violence, free of uh, uh, bad names, calling bad names, go out, support your candidates, and stay with your candidate till you cast your vote at the right time. That, I think that is the so, the right thing to do. So you're saying people should face their candidate they and face the business they, yeah, on the scene. But you know, money in Nigeria, like giving people of rice, money, free money, free rice, you know, just dashing people out stuff. That's what the politicians do, the yes, old ones yes. that have been in power for a long time. That's what they've been doing. That's the game they've been playing on the people. So do you think the people are wise enough now? Not to collect the rice and the you know the little money they give people to no, people, I, I, I believe people are are always wise enough to know what to do. But you know, if, if you are hungry, the first thing you think of is how to feed yourself. How to feed yourself. That's to the get first energy. Thing. Poverty in Nigeria has been uh, deliberately weaponized. It is not that. People don't know what to do. They know what to do, but they are poor. They hmm. can't. They can't do any other thing. The the the, the politician will still serve them the money. They will serve them the rice. They will serve them everything. So they use that money and everything to as the weapon yes, yes. to use against they, the citizen. They, yeah, they make people deliberately poor so that whenever they give them a little penny, stipends, they will appreciate they, it. They, 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 they have to grab it. So, and they can use them as slaves, take yeah. advantage of them, do whatsoever, them. Yeah, and they'll be yes man, yes sir to them. That, that so they make them purposely poor for their so, own use. So my brother, you know, it's a nice conversation I have with you. Uh, so I, I really enjoy my interview with you. The last interview we have, we have a lot of people that have good comments about it. You know, we'll be coming back with other topics. I'll be talking about other prolific issue on this platform we'll be seeing on the african unity platform uh king Idris on my own side um high p to everybody that passed away in these few days you know and what do you want to talk about the the passing away and everything that we talked about well the only thing you can say here is uh, god should grant them the fortitude to bear the loss and uh, we pray that uh, such will be the hand of such occurrences it is not a good thing to say all over, all over again at all it's very, it's very sad so my people will be coming to an end of the segment today we'll be coming back with other prolific topics and we'll be coming back with good content so we'll be coming to an end of the segment today please like and make comment to this to the comment section let's know what you feel about our conversation about our interview with mr steven Ade, let know what you feel. Say your mind. We're gonna reply all the comments back. So on the African Unity platform with King Idris, I'm saying one unity, one Africa, one people. Unity over division. Thank you. Thank you. We root for peace. Peace all over. Peace all over. Thank you, my people. Thank you. Thank you.